This is Alvira, a 25-year-old woman living in the northern region of Jamaica. During infancy and early childhood, Alvida suffered from episodes of fever and swelling of the hands and feet every three to four months. She also experienced sepsis, a disseminated bacterial infection of the blood, leading to several weeks of hospitalization. During her hospital stays, she must have her blood drawn multiple times to check for infection and guide her treatment, but it's a struggle each time to find a vein because her veins are collapsed due to her illness. As Alvida grew up, the episodes of pain crises have become unbearable, and she never knows when the next one will happen. She feels like she is being stabbed from the inside by alternating sharp and dull knives that target every part of her body. She screams, she moans, but nothing seems to console her. Back when she was a child, this illness gave her a stroke. Although it wasn't diagnosed until later, this stroke resulted in developmental delays, including trouble learning to walk. Alvida has sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a group of genetic disorders that can be inherited in one of two ways. It can be inherited homozygously when both parents contribute the sickle hemoglobin or hemoglobin S gene. Alternatively, it can be inherited heterozygously when the child inherits one hemoglobin S gene from one parent and another abnormal hemoglobin gene from the other parent. The disease results in the production of the abnormal hemoglobin S instead of the normal hemoglobin A. Certain triggers can make the abnormal hemoglobin S crystallize, changing the red cells from round to sickle shape. This change makes the red cells fragile and rigid. These red cells tend to be stickier, clump together, and lyse or break down quickly. These events result in blockage of the red blood vessels and lack of oxygen in the blood and tissues. The disease has many complications, such as infections, stroke, damage to the spleen resulting in reduced immunity, leg ulcers, and lung problems. About 10% of all the people in Jamaica have the sickle cell trait, meaning that they have only inherited the gene from one parent and will usually not have any symptoms. When a couple, with both having the sickle cell trait, have a child, there is a 25% chance that the child will have the sickle cell disease with symptoms, and a 50% chance that the child will only carry the trait. In Jamaica, sickle cell disease affects one in every 150 births. Sickle cell disease is most common in people living in or originating from Sub-Saharan African, but it also affects people of Mediterranean, Caribbean, coasts of Latin America, Middle Eastern, and Asian origin. The sickle cell gene is most common in areas where malaria is endemic, as the trait confers better survival if malaria is contracted. 
When Alvita's parents got married, they never knew about or discussed the risk of sickle cell disease. Alvita was diagnosed when she began having symptoms, and this was the first time that her parents learned of the condition. They were devastated. They experienced every emotion, from anger to denial to guilt of being responsible for the suffering of their child. Days and nights in the hospital, watching their child go through her painful ordeals were emotionally draining. At school, Alvita always played catch-up due to her crippling episodes and hospitalizations. Because factors like dehydration and changes in temperatures could trigger an episode, she was left out from sports and many activities. She felt alone and often misunderstood because her pain was an invisible symptom and only she knew how it felt. As an adult interviewing for work, Alvita noticed how quickly her interviewer's attitude changed once she mentioned her illness. So gradually, she learned to hide it. But even now that she's employed, her illness makes things difficult. Just like during her childhood, Alvita is hospitalized four to six times a year, and on occasions, several weeks at a time. When she comes back to work, her co-workers resent her for her absence. She excels at her work and works very hard, but she still misses out on promotions due to the unpredictable nature of her illness. Now Alvita is about to get married, and she wants to have children with her husband. Fortunately, much progress has been made in researching sickle cell disease. Her husband can be tested for the presence of sickle cell disease or trait, and both can receive counseling so that they can make informed decisions about childbearing. Once they decide to have children, they can ensure their newborn gets screening if access to prenatal screening is not an option, since early diagnosis leads to early implementation of life-saving measures for the infected infant. Jamaica in particular was the first country in the world to have extensive newborn screening for sickle cell disease and has implemented near-universal screenings as of December 2015. Also, when parents are aware of the condition, the infant can receive penicillin prophylaxis and vaccines to prevent infection, and they can learn about palpitation of the spleen to detect acute splenic sequestration. These simple interventions have been shown to improve survival significantly. Progress has been made in research, education, and prevention, yet more efforts are needed in improving treatment modalities and affordability, as well as competence of healthcare workers in caring for sickle cell patients. Hydroxyurea is currently the only medication that is licensed to be used in sickle cell disease to especially reduce the incidence of painful crises and acute chest syndrome, but it has possible side effects and requires close monitoring of patients. Some patients also receive blood transfusion to decrease the proportion of sickle red cells and improve oxygenation to the tissues. However, chronic transfusion is not available in Jamaica due to limited blood supply. Cost and financial burden also limit patients' access to medication and treatment, although now the National Health Fund provides some subsidization. The only available potential cure is bone marrow or stem cell transplantation, but this is an option very few can access and has tremendous risks and costs. Up to 5% of people undertaking these procedures may die as a consequence of the treatment and finding donors that match is very difficult. These are options that would not be available to Alvita in Jamaica. As the life expectancy of people with sickle cell disease improves, the focus on early detection of complications becomes more important. Alvita is persevering through her illness. She has dreams and goals in life for herself and for her future children. 
With further advancements and research that enable all in need to receive effective therapies, the lives of those like Alvida may no longer need to be centered on sickle cell disease. They will be able to enjoy better and more productive lives.